Okay. <laughs> now we're going to get to this right here. Here we go. I'm not going to lie. I have a lot to say about this. Do, do your thing, Deuce. Can I cook? You going to let me? Okay. Don't okay. Me. So Kay Cunningham received a five year, 236 million max extension. So look, check it out. Everybody's saying, you know, we overpaid for Cade. He hasn't earned it. We only won 14 games. If he was that good, he would help us win more games. He's not the guy. He's a piece. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about it for a minute. That contract, right? He 100% deserves it. First things first. I think we can all agree that he had the worst constructed roster in the league. <laughs> and possibly the worst coaching performance by any coach last year. Who didn't even seem to care this team was historically bad last year greg kelser right just recently by the way shout out to greg kelser for collaborating with me on that instagram post but what he said was very very telling he said when you lose 68 games you're finding ways to lose mm -hmm. and that there were so many games that the pistons could and should have won last year yep 14 wins last year uh was shocking i was there for all 14 i was there for all yeah. 68 losses and I can tell you, when you lose 68 games, you're finding ways to lose mm -hmm. every way imaginable. This team could have easily have, you know, won twice as many as 14. And we'd be having a different conversation because that would, that would show progress. Right. And we'd be probably far more optimistic about next season. But, you know, the fact is the fact. The reality is what it is. Tell me you're talking about Monty Williams without saying you're talking about Monty Williams. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on my Instagram or Twitter. But it was obvious to me and everybody who saw that, that he was talking about Monty. And that this team was way worse than they should have been. So I say that to say that Greg Kelser, he watched every single game up close last year. As he's done for the last 20, 30 years. You never heard him talking that way about Dwayne Casey when he was coach. <laughs> And this team was actively tanking the season before last when Dwayne Casey was here. And they still managed to win more games than they did last year when they were trying to quote unquote win. So with all of that, you point the finger at Cade and say he didn't play well enough or that he should have somehow willed this team to more wins. That's wild to me. On top of that, we just talked about Tobias Harris and why the Pistons paid him 52 million over the next two seasons. Did we not? What did we say? Veteran leadership. Locker room presence, professionalism, right? All that stuff. Yep. Why does that not apply to Kay Cunningham? When it comes to how he's conducted himself since he's been here, he's going into his fourth season with his third coach. And as far as on court play, it's really his third season with his third coach because he missed a year. He's had, bro, he's had everything working against him since he's been here. It's got to be hard, man, on a young player. 22 years old, looking at all these other teams around him, Houston, OKC, uh, Orlando, mm -hmm. all these teams who were in the same position we were in when he got drafted here. And they all had better look in the draft, they all have better roster construction, and they're all much closer to contending than we are right now. But despite all that, Kate is still a consummate pro. When the Pistons were going through the losing streak, more times than not, who was showing up post game? to answer the same questions over and over and over again. So often, bro, when things are going well, star players around the league are front and center, right? But when things start going south, nowhere to be found. They don't want to face the music. You never heard Kate being an issue in the locker room or pointing the blame at his coach or pointing the blame at his teammates. And this is a young, impressionable team. Like, think of the effect that type of attitude could have on that team. We think it's bad now. It could have been way worse. Perfect example. And this is for my all OG Pistons fans. Y'all remember this. The year was 2011. John Kuster was the coach. That team was bad. So bad that I think it was six or seven players. They actually revolted. Can you probably remember this? Yeah, I remember. They, right? They revolted. They revolted. They either showed up late to a morning shoot around or they just missed it completely. But they were given excuses, you know, I sprained my esophagus or I broke, I broke my pinky. It was the most random excuses. They were, they were basically, they didn't care. They just intentionally didn't show up. So that left John Kuster with six active guys to play that game that night. Yep. They intentionally and publicly blamed and embarrassed him. And he got ejected that same night for obvious reasons, understandable reasons. But the messed up part, those same players that refused to play, 
were on the bench laughing. Look it up. It's not hard to find. You can go find it. I watched it live. King, I'm sure you watched it live too. Yep. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that the frustration wasn't warranted. John Kuster, that's his name. John Kuster, he wasn't the right coach for this team. He was in way over his head. I get, I get that. I get it. But you still got to be professional. Yeah. You pay well to do your job, man. You got to honor that. And many of those guys are veterans. I'm not throwing shade on any of these guys, but one thing we do on here, King, we keep it a stat. We call it how we see it, regardless of what or who it is. It don't matter. So this past season, something to that same effect could have happened, especially after this 27 game losing streak. But Kate, as a leader, what he do? The opposite. He was encouraging guys. Don't jump off the boat. This team ain't two and 27 bad. Always positive, because he knew his teammates were watching looking at him that's the leadership quality so it's very unfair to put him in that position and he still showed up he still faced the music he had to know bro that it was going to be a ton of criticism coming his way a bunch of memes coming his way regardless of what he was saying in that post game but he showed up he still led by example so regardless of what you think he did on the court if he's worth it on the court you cannot deny that his leadership off the court especially during that streak is something to be rewarded that's rare especially for a 22 year old who was a number one pick overall so if we're going to talk about how the Pistons needed to pay tobias harris in part because of his leadership and professionalism as we should because he is then there's no reason whatsoever that kate doesn't deserve it too for those who might say yeah that's good and all but we still need to to produce on the court okay fine i got you covered i got some numbers so last season right he averaged 23 points seven and a half assists four rebounds so I don't think many even really noticed because the team was so bad last year. But last season, he had a career high in points per game at 23, as I mentioned. A career high in assists per game at 7.5, as I mentioned. A career high in field goal percentage at 45%. A career high in three-point percentage at 35%. And a career high free throw percentage at 86%. And his minutes were the exact same. 33. So he's becoming a better player year over year, despite the team being historically bad. And you might say, okay, well, it's easy to score points on a bad team. Somebody's got to score the points, right? Okay, fine. But you know what's not easy to do on a bad team? Be efficient. Because teams are keen on you. They're keen. You got eight to ten eyes on you. And despite that, his efficiency went up. Imagine what he could do with a proper coach on a team with just league average conditions. And then let's talk about that contract. There's no way you can look at that situation as a whole and put the blame solely on him and say he doesn't deserve the money. No way. It don't take somebody with a half a brain, half a brain to realize that if you place Cade on any one of these these other rosters that were actually productive and that didn't have a coaching staff that was non-existent, we having a whole different conversation right now. Leave that 14 win season Mm -hmm. exactly where the hell it's at. Let it Go. Somebody said John Kuster got more wins that season than Monty Williams got last year. Like, what, what are we talking about, man? If Monty Williams performs the way most of us thought he would, I'm not saying get 50, 60 games, but if he just does what we expected him to do in year one, even in year one, we're not having this conversation about Case contract. Yep. It's nothing to talk about. If you're going to reward Tobias Harris for professionalism and all those different things, there's no reason you shouldn't give it to Kate Cunningham, who's going to do this for four years. Right. What more did you want him to do? He got better when the team got worse. Come on, man. Once he has a competent team, then we'll all see that he was worth that contract. Yeah, Casey, he's going to continue to improve. I just hope that this team can improve with him. Right. So, yeah, make make right. it a little bit easier on yourselves, man, and go out there and give it everything y'all got. Yep. Just like Kate is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. Just like Kate is, man. Let's stop being the laughing stock of the league. Hotter than MTV in Y2K. You don't want to see, but that Y2K. Breaking records set by Michael J. Bringing glory days back to the future, Michael J. He's way ahead of his time. He's got a plan, yeah. Fed off by none other than his brother, Cannon. If this is more than a game, it's a passion. Why they see we working? Cause I'm a